Let me check the sales values for some of the products that we're selling in Amsterdam. Now, here I have two slicers. And in the first one, I have selected the store Amsterdam. And in the second one, we have the products. And I'm just going to check maybe the docking station if we had some sales for that. Well, nothing is showing. Fetch? Why is nothing showing in my visual? And maybe if I select a lamp. Ah, there you go. But why, why do we need to click on all of these products? Why did they show up in that slicer? Now, wouldn't it be better if we could only show the products for which we had sales in the Amsterdam store? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set that up. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look at our problem. Now here we have a one fact table for the sales and we have a couple of dimension tables like dim product, dim store, and we have a custom date table. Now let's start off by creating two slicers that are based on the fields that are inside of the same table. For example, we could take over here from dim product, the product category, and put that on the first slicer. And then on the second slicer, I wanna see the product names. So let's put that on the second one. Now, if we select a certain product category, let's say computers and software, then I only see the products for that category. And the same the other way around. If I make a selection in that second slicer, for example, laptops, then that filters the product categories and only shows the product categories where we have laptops. So that's only computers and software. So uh, the filter flows in both directions. Now, if you want to change that, then you could go over here to, let's say, the product name slicer, go to format, added interactions, and then over here we could, for example, say that the product slicer should not filter the product category slicer. And once you have that, then you can turn off added interactions. And then when we make a change here in the product slicer, you see it doesn't filter the product category slicer anymore. So now all of the product categories would always be visible. So that means we could go, for example, to furniture, and maybe also we wanna include home and kitchen. We see all of the products that fall in these two categories, and we can make a choice uh, for the products that we wanna see. So you see when we have two slices with fields that come from the same table, well, it's pretty straightforward. We can edit the interactions as we like. Now it gets more difficult when we have two fields that come from different tables. For example, one from the stores table and the other one from the products table. So let's go to that first slicer and instead of product category, let's take the store. So here from the store, store name, and use that on the slicer. Now I'm going to filter on store Amsterdam. And now for that store, we have only five products where we had some sales. Now here in the product slicer, you see that we have all of the products and I only want to see those five products for which we had sales. So first of all, why do we see all 15 products and not only those for which we had sales, like in the example before? And second of all, how can we solve it? Now, let's first have a closer look at the problem. So for that, we have to go to the data model. So here we have our stores table, which we used for that first slicer, and we have our products table, which we used for that second slicer. Now, when we filter on the store Amsterdam, that filter follows over here that relationship to FST sales, because this shows that it's a one directional filter direction. However, that filter doesn't flow up to dim product, and therefore you still see all of the products. Now, how could we solve that? Well, we could go over here and change the filter direction into bi-directional. So over here, let's double click on it and set the cross filter direction to both. Now, then click on OK. And that means that if we now filter on Amsterdam, well, that should also filter the products. Now, let's see in the report view if that's true. I go back and indeed it solved our problem. Now, if you want the product slicer also to filter the store slicer, so the other way around, then we have to make that other relationship also bidirectional. Okay, so uh, that when we click here on chair, you only see those stores where we sold chairs. Okay, now let's go back to the data model and let's make the other one also bidirectional. And then we can go back. You see, now we only have the stores where we sold chairs. Now you might think, well, that's it, easy solution. However, you have to be a little bit careful when you use these bi-directional filters. Well, here this data model is very simple. However, if we would have a more complex data model with more than one 
fact table, then this could create ambiguity. Now, second of all, it requires a little bit of extra processing. So therefore it could also slow everything down by a bit. So if you have a bigger data model, also not the best way to go. Now there's a better solution by using the visual filter that we can add onto the slices. Now let's have a look at that one. I'm going to undo the bidirectional filters. So over here, let's go and adjust it back to a single direction. Now let's go back to the report view. And here we're going to put a visual slicer on, let's say the products filter. Okay, now we only want to have those products for which we had sales. So one easy filter that we could place on it would be to take the total sales and then add this here on the filters for that visual. And we want to say that it should not be blank. Now apply the filter and there you go. Now the same thing, we could do also on the other one. So if we want to have, have the filter direction also from the product slicer to the other slicer to the store slicer, then we could also do the same thing. So select the slicer, put total sales on it. And then also here we can say that it should not be blank. All right. And now we have kind of the same thing as if these two slicers were using fields from the same table. Now what would be just a little bit more efficient so that we don't have to calculate the sales amount for all of these products or stores would be to create a measure. And then let's rename this one to sales true question mark. And then over here we want to check if uh, the sales table is empty. Okay, so over here we can say is empty. Now what table are we checking for? Let's go for FST sales. And we want to reverse the logic, and so it should not be empty. So we say not is empty. And then because for a filter we need zero or one, we cannot say true or false. I need to wrap this inside of an integer function. Okay, so that it returns zero or one. Okay, now that we have the measure, we can use it instead of that total sales filter. We just take the new measure, drag it onto the filter for that uh, slice that you want to apply it to. And then over here we set it equal to one and click here on apply so that we only see those products or those stores for which we had sales. Okay. So over here, I click on, let's say Berlin and you see, we only see the products that we're selling in the Berlin store. Okay. So now let's take away that filter that we have on the stores. Okay. So that the stores are always visible. Now, if I would click here on Amsterdam, I see the products that had sales for the Amsterdam store. If I click on Berlin, same story. However, if I would now make a selection like coffee machine, a product uh, for which we had no sales in the Amsterdam store, and I go back to Amsterdam, then you see that coffee machine is still selected and well, our table visual is blank. Now, as soon as I deselect coffee machine, you see, now it disappears. Now this could be a good thing because uh, it doesn't just change the selection like this. However, it could also be annoying uh, because it is a product that we are not selling in the Amsterdam store. However, we cannot just overwrite the selection of the, uh, of the product slicer. Now, one alternative that we have is to use a different slicer. We could go for one of the custom slicers. For example, if we go here and click on get more visuals and just search for slicer, and then one slicer that I know works a little bit differently is this hierarchy slicer here. And now you see we have it here. And I'm going to change the normal slices into that custom visual slicer. Okay, so both of them I changed to the hierarchy slicer. Okay, now they look almost the same. But now there's a small difference. I'm going to select again at the store Berlin, select the product coffee machine. And now I switch back to store Amsterdam. Now you see the table is also empty. However, here in that product slicer, the item doesn't show as selected anymore. It's still selected. However, it's not visible, which might also be a bad thing. That depends on what your preference is, of course. Now, another thing that we could do is inform the user that they maybe selected something that doesn't return any products with sales. Now, to do that, we just add another measure. And let's call this one slicer message. And then over here, we have the same logic as what we used before. So we can say if, and then not, and then is empty. And then we want to check the FCT sales table. 
and if it's not empty, then we want to show the message for the end user. So here I said, no sales for the selected filters, I just selection. Okay, and then we can close the measure, press enter, and use that measure on a card visual that we place right next to our slicer filters. So let's pick a card, let's add a slicer mes message onto the card, go here to format, data label, then over here, the text size, we have to make it a little bit smaller. Let's go for, let's say, 14. And then here, the category label, let's turn that off. Make it a bit smaller. Place it wherever you like it to be. Adjust the formatting, and that's it. And so no sales for the selected filters, adjust selection. So now you have here a message that informs the user that there are no sales for the selected filters. Adjust the selection. And over here, as soon as we do have a valid selection, and that message disappears. Okay, so now that you get the idea of how we can use visual level filters on our slices to show only stores or products for which we had sales, well, we can get a little bit more creative than that. For example, we can return only the top n number of products based on the sales. Okay, now let's have a look at that example. I'm going to insert a measure, and let's call this one top n filter. And then over here, we first have to calculate the rank using rank X. So now we need to iterate of the products table. However, we need to make sure that we see all of the products um, using the all function, or maybe better all selected if we also want to keep filters that come from outside of the visual. So all selected makes sense here. Then we want to iterate the products table. Okay. And then over here, we want to base the rank on our total sales measure. Okay, so let's look for total sales. And that's it. Now we can use that measure onto our slicer filter. Okay, so instead of here sales true question mark, I'm going to replace this one with the top end filter. And here I want to say that it should be less than or equal to. Let's go for three and apply the filter. Okay. Now let's give this a try. So if nothing is selected, it shows here laptop, monitor, webcam. Now I select a store. And so because we used all selected, it respects that filter from this slicer. And you see we have over here at the top three products based on sales for the Amsterdam uh, store. And the same for Berlin. Okay, so this example was already a little bit more creative. However, we can do better than that. Now here I have another data model where we have the subscription transactions linked to them date and linked to company table. Now, let's have a look at the data set. So over here, we have different transaction dates for different companies. And you see we have subscriptions, so a regular income coming from uh, different companies that subscribed to our product. And you see over here for the first one, sales amounts of 50 every month. And then for the next company, 25, next company, 100. And what I want to do is I want to have one slicer filter on the company and one uh, timeline filter, also slicer, but then on the transaction date. Okay, now let's build it. Let's go back to the report view. Now I already inserted a line chart that shows our revenues over time based on those subscriptions. So let's insert two slicers, okay? And then on the first one, there we are going to take the company name, drag it on there. Then for the second one, there we're going to go to date, our date table, take the date field, and drag it on there and it creates the timeline. Okay, now what I want to have is that I select one of these companies and then it doesn't show me uh, the full timeline for all of the dates that we have in a data model. However, I only want to have here the, those dates which are relevant for that company. So company B, well, the, the sign up date was not the 1st of January, but was in this case, the 1st of February. So I want to start on February. And also the ending date, well, I want to see it until, well, the last relevant date for that company. Maybe they are not signed up anymore. Okay, so I want to adjust that timeline, make it dependent on what I selected in the company slicer. Now, the idea is the same. However, the measure is going to be a little bit more complex. So let's have a look. So when we do our calculations, it's always much easier to see it in a table. So I'm going to get rid of that uh, line chart here for a moment. And I'm going to create a table, simple table. And let's put it over here. And let's put in the company name. And then let's also put in the dates from the date table. And you see, because we have the relationship between dim date and the subscription sales, 
on the transaction date. We have here now all of the transaction dates. Now, what we need to know is that first transaction date because that is the sign up date for that specific company. So if I switch here, for example, to company C, here we have a sign up date of the 1st of March and the last date that is still re relevant is the 1st of August. Okay, that was the last transaction that took place. So that timeline should go for company C from March till August. Okay, now we need over here these different components, the sign up date, the last relevant date, and the current date. And with that, we can set up the filter that we can then use uh, for that timeline. Okay, now let's write this measure. So I go over here to my metrics table, and then click on new measure. And let's rename this one to slicer date filter. And then over here, we first start with that sign up date. Okay, so over here, let's create a variable, uh, sign up date, sign up date. Here we want to look for the very minimum, the very first um, transaction date that we had in our sales transactions table. Okay, we cannot leave it like this because now it will always return the minimum within the filter context. So we need to remove any filter context that comes from the date table so that we find the overall minimum. So we need to wrap this inside of a calculate and let's indent over here then this min function, okay? And we need to remove the filters, so remove filters from our date table, so then date. Then we can close the calculate function. And now let's see what it returns. So return the sign up date. Okay, now let's add this to the table so that you can see the intermediate result. And you see, we always have the 1st of March for a company C, which is selected in the slicer. So that looks good. Okay, so we have found the sign up date. Now, the same thing we need to do with the last transaction date. Okay, so this is going to be another variable. So let's go back and I'm just going to copy this part and then paste it underneath it. And this is going to be last transaction date. Okay, and the only thing that we need to change over here is the min to a max. Okay, so almost there. Now the next variable is going to store, well, the current date in the filter context. So that is going to be the selected date, which we can get by just taking the minimum of dim date date. Okay, so now the important part, the logical condition that we want to have for the slice of filter. Okay, so let's call this one slice of filter. And here we can use an if condition. So let's create a bit of space. And here we can say if the selected date is bigger than or equal to the sign up date and also two ampersand signs, the selected date is before or equal to the last transaction date. Okay, so last transaction date. Well, then we want to return one and otherwise we want to return a zero. Now we only have to change what we want to return, not the sign update, but we want to have the slicer filter. And now if we scroll down in the table and look for the 1st of March, then everything from the 1st of March onwards has a one until we reach the 1st of August. So let's scroll down a bit further. And there you see after that, and we have only zeros. Okay, so and those, are the, and those are dates that we cannot select anymore because they, those are after the last relevant date for that specific company. Okay, so let's now take our timeline slicer and on that slicer, we're going to place our visual level filter. So here we have our slicer date filter. Let's drag it onto the filter section. And here we want to say that it's equal to or should be equal to one. So now you see it doesn't work just yet. However, because we need to make sure that here this company slicer interacts with that timeline. So you need to turn the filter on between them. And then you see it does work. If we have company A, it goes from the 1st of January till the 1st of November. Company B only started in February and ended already in April. Company C started in March and goes up to August. Okay, so now we made that timeline dependent on the selection of the company. Okay, now once that is done, go to format, turn edit interactions off, and now you can select the companies that you're interested in, play around with the relevant time period on the timeline, you see that the chart nicely updates. So you see visual level filters on slicers opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, maybe you have some other good ideas, then share them in the comment section below. If you have any questions, just let us know. And if you got some value out of this video, then consider subscribing. 
Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.